Hey everyone, and welcome to the Guiding God's Daughters podcast. We're all about getting real and going deep here. I want to help you plant seeds so you can grow in your faith. So join me in this episode as we walk together and learn about God's faithfulness. Hey everybody, welcome to Guiding God's Daughters. This is part two of finding biblical or godly role models, women role models. And um, this is for my older women, but it's also for my younger women because I'm going to give you tools on how to find these godly role models. And before I jump into kind of the ones um, that us older women may struggle with, I want to read from this awesome book that I have loved for years um, called Spiritual Mothering, the Titus II Model for Women Mentoring Women. Um, and, uh, Titus two, I'm going to read Titus two, three through five from the Amplified. It says older women similarly are not to be, are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips, nor addicted to much wine, teaching what is right and good so that they may encourage the young women to tenderly love their husbands and their children, to be sensible, pure makers of a home where God is honored, good natured, being subject to their own husbands so that the word of God will not be dishonored. Um, and this book, there's uh, a chapter, um, and I just love what it says about where are these women getting their biblical role models. So I'm just going to, it's page 119. If you have the book or are interested in getting it, it says, today's woman has grown up in a culture that magnifies personal peace and affluence. As Francis Schaeffer said, this generation of women has never known a time when they could not legally get an abortion because they have a right to their own bodies. They grew up on a self-centered approach to life, and many of them have had, a, had no role models of Christian values. Who is assuming responsibility to transmit biblical values to these women? What world and life view is being communicated to women today? We hear that this is the decade of women. We must not allow the voices of the world to set the agenda for this decade, nor must we allow those voices to teach women how to be women. Christian women must speak with boldness and clarity about womanhood and must live distinctly Christian lives. Christian women must articulate a biblical world and life view and the implications of this perspective for women. Women are spiritual trendsetters. Today, many women are buying into new age philosophies because they're looking for hope in their hopelessness. We must not abandon these women. We must come alongside and encourage and equip them to live for God's glory. When we reach women, we will reach the spiritual tempo of our culture. This is a doable task as one by one, we become Elizabeth's for that woman on our doorstep, but we cannot do it by remaining silent. We must speak the words of life. And there's a proverb 2015. There is gold and abundance of costly stones, but the lips of knowledge are a precious, precious jewel. And it's just, we have to share the word. We have to teach true knowledge, you know, because the world, you know, if it's not talking about, you know, um, how riches and good looks and lots of Instagram followers are the best thing you can be. It's talking about how super smart you are and intelligence is everything and no offense, but it's not because God's knowledge and the wisdom of God is much bigger and stronger than any of this intelligence you can get with 20 degrees. Believe me, I have a graduate degree and I'm telling you the word of God is where my true knowledge has come from. So let me jump into a couple of these women and a couple of them are Christian authors, which I think is good for us women. I mean, I'm in my 40s, so I don't know, 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever age you're in. You probably, if you're a Christian woman, you probably know of some of these authors. Um, and some of them are considered to be Christian authors or they were. I've read a couple of their books. Um, some of them I've just read about them. Um, but I have friends who have kind of warned me. And I'm glad they have, because there are things that I will just stay away from. And um, and I think that's where kind of progressive Christianity comes in. It kind of is trying to steer people away from the truth. So um, I was talking to someone yesterday about a couple of these authors. One is Rachel Hollis. Most of us know she wrote that girl, Wash Your Face. Her books are marketed to Christian women. She claims to be a Jesus lover, yet many of her themes in her book don't reflect, reflect that, including the concept of making it all about you. You know, you, it's all about yourself. And, you know, I 
am a big fan of getting introspective, of looking at yourself and looking where you need to grow and reflecting on those things. But it can't be all about you because when you're following Jesus, it's about him. So um, I'm challenged by that because what I try to do, you know, I say some people call my books self-help books. I call them God help books because what I'm trying to do is to pull people away from just trying to fix themselves and get them to lean on God for help. So to me, it's like this woman is going against what we're trying to do is to help women see that it's about Jesus. But, um, you know, that's just one of the authors. Jen Hatmaker is another one. Um, she's a Christian influencer, author. Um, and he, she's kind of what I talked about in the first episode of this um, mentors thing is godly mentors or role models. Um because she got real political. She came out about Donald Trump and how much she hates him. And then she started talking about same-sex marriage. And that's when she just unleashed on all her political opinions. And she's very focused on social agendas, which, yes, this is what some people are all about. But I don't care if you like Donald Trump or not. Just don't, you know, I, I'm not sitting here and going on and on about who I hate. And because I know the influence that can have. And, um, you know, I am just trying to keep it in the word. I may, you may know who I am for because of something you've seen in my feed. Well, so what? You follow me, not because of that, but because of the truth that I'm sharing. So, and that person, whoever I, I may vote for, um, is not a God and they aren't going to save the world. Believe me, I've been in national politics. So don't try to make me think that I think that that person's going to save the world because I know they're not. Anyway. Um, my struggle, though, is that she went political and it's like, mm, you just shot yourself in the foot. You were teaching women to get in the word and now you're teaching women to make it all about social stuff. So uh, I struggle with that. Um, next one is Glennon Doyle. It used to be Glennon Doyle Melton. Um, she has a blog, Momastery, that got very popular. I read her book, Carry On Warrior, because I love that she was a Christian woman in recovery. She's written Love Warrior and she's written Untamed. There are all sorts of things. You can go and follow Elisa Childers to find out more of the things she talks about that are more worldly than godly. Um, all about, again, it's all about you and you're the warrior. And yes, guess what? I am a warrior, but I'm a warrior for Christ. It's not, mm, I'm the bomb. It's all about me. Anyway, uh, my struggle is that here she goes and writes some book about marriage and the day it comes, I'll never forget it. The day, I guess the day it come out, the day before it came out, she just announced that she was going to leave her husband and that she was going to start dating Abby Wambach, the soccer star. And I'm like, great. And I don't know how many kids she's got, a couple. And what makes me upset is that she just gave a bunch of women permission to go, mm, I think I like girls, I'm going to go and leave my husband. And that's what I don't love is that you know, these women don't realize how much they're influencing other women their age and younger women because other women their age watch this, go, I can do that. And then they influence the next generation through that. So um, I know for me, I want to show my daughter it is not about fitting into the world and all of its pronouns, whatever. It's knowing that I want to teach my daughter that she was not just born to stand out, but she was born to be set apart by God for a purpose. So, and I think that is not what the world teaches. And that's where I think a lot of people kind of want to mix it up, like a little bit of God, a little bit of world. And I just, y you can't. So, um, you know, and a lot of it is kind of removing the kind of family unit. I mean, if you look at the left's agenda, it's all about you just crippling the family and uh which is just to me I'm come from a broken home I my parents were divorced and I am all of, I am so fired up about family because I have seen the brokenness and I I want to bring hope you know um because family you know can change um but of course the world's trying to take it down so um God can restore families maybe not how you want it but he can so Here's this other person that I think is awesome is, have you seen the Italian president? Her name is Georgia Maloney. She's actually my age, 45. She's a mom and she's a president. Um, and the left, she's been all over the news because the left doesn't like her, uh, cause she's too conservative. And she's, there's a speech that keeps going around, 
Um, from 2019, she gave it the World Congress of Families. Ton of controversy around it by the left. So she said, I love it because I'm just going to read it out loud because it's so good. Why is the family an enemy? Why is the family so frightening? There is a single answer to all these questions because it defines us, because it is our identity, because everything that defines us now is an enemy for those who would like us to no longer have an identity and to simply be perfect consumers. And so they attack national identity. They attack religious identity. They attack gender identity. They attack family identity. I can't define myself as Italian, Christian, woman, mother. No, I must be citizen X, gender X, parent one, parent two. I must be a number because when I am only a number, when I no longer have an identity or roots, then I will be the perfect slave at the mercy of financial speculators, the perfect consumer. That's why we inspire so much fear. That's why this event inspires so much fear, because we do not want to be numbers. We will defend the value of the human being every single human being because each of us has a unique genetic code that is unrepeatable. And like it or not, that is sacred. We will defend it. We will defend God, country, and family. Those things that disgust people so much, we will do it to defend our freedom because we will never be slaves and simple consumers at the mercy of financial speculators. That is our mission. Bam. Mm. Love it. That is a woman who inspires me. That is a woman who is not afraid to stand up and inspires me to not be afraid to stand up for faith and freedom in Christ and in my country to and for my values. I get to have my values. So she's not going to be defined by worldly identities. So I don't have to be defined by worldly identities. Um, you know, not that she gives me permission to, but it's like, it's just when someone else does it, you are empowered. So that's the kind of woman that I would love for young women to see more of, for older women to see more of, to feel like they can be bolder and not quiet. So, you know, and she doesn't have to stand up there and be a leader and be a man hater and be just fuming hatred about all the people that wronged her. You know, she can be a leader, be a leader who fights for her values, not a leader who fits in with the world that has no values. But she's just one. You know, think about the people that you choose to let influence you, the people you follow on social media. If you're following people filled with hate, guess what you're going to be filled with? Hate. What goes in the heart comes out. What goes in the mouth comes out. If you are following people who are all about vanity, like the Kardashians and how you look, guess what will consume you? If you're following those who are wanting to find an identity in the world, guess what will consume you? You're going to be defined and trying to define yourself by the world's identities. And there's so many that it just shows you that none of them are a true identity in Christ. So there's a couple things I want you to do when you're done listening to this today. This is my kind of outline for you to take action. One, go through and just weed out the toxicity in your newsfeed. Stop giving the devil a foothold to make you focus on the surface. Only choose those who have substance, who live and are led by the Lord. They are the brave ones, not the ones who stand out with a thousand dollar shirt and perfect bodies. It's the ones whose posture of their heart is set towards the Lord. Two, get into the word for yourself. Stop trying to make your truth the most important truth. This is more probably for the younger generation. But, you know, yes, you may go, you may, you know, we're all different. We're all unique, but it's not about your truth versus my truth. It's about knowing the truth. Third, follow God first above all else. We are in the end times. You have heard me say this. This isn't about checking the box of going to church. This is about establishing a relationship with Jesus so that you can live free in Christ while we're still here. That means repenting of your sins so the Lord can give you new life. There is no gimmick in the world that can do that. Stop fooling around with worldly things and follow God. Next, once you are raised with Christ, seek him. It's not like when you're saved, you're like, I'm done. I'm good. God's got me. No, you have to seek him. Colossians 3, 1 through 2 says... If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. The more you seek him, the less those things will be attractive to you. If you read Galatians 5, you can get, I keep pointing you back to Galatians 5. I did that last week. Verses 13 through 15. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. The entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. I think that's kind of funny because how many people 
devour each other because they're jealous of somebody's platform and what they have and get stuck in envy. In envy. Like, no, it is it is not good to focus on the flesh. Not that we don't. We're all human. We all deal with our fleshly desires. But if you are letting that stuff drive you, mm, not a fun road to go down. Next, find a church if you don't have one. If you're in a community, you need to be surrounded by women of God. You, ju you just have to. You can't do this alone. You can't just be like, mm, I have faith. We're not in a time where you can just say, mm, I have faith anymore. No, no. You got to be a warrior. So if you don't belong to a church, find one. If you are afraid to, I would pray for God to put a woman in your life who is led by the Lord. And, you know, notice that he's putting them in your life for a reason, that maybe they're a gift from the Lord to help lead you to him. So receive it and walk through that open door. For my older women who've lived through your 20s, 30s, maybe even 40s, and you were trying to remain a strong Christian for your children, for the people in your life in this crazy world. I just want to encourage you to keep going, keep walking in step with the Lord, keep seeking him, keep setting that example, keep walking with the women in your life who are following God. You are blessed. Keep showing those kids how to do it. Um, search for truth in the word, as I know many of you do, and live it out because you aren't going to get the truth in the world. And you really need to not just listen to it, listen to me saying it. You've got to get into it yourself. And James 1, 22, 25 says, and this is for those of you who haven't really gotten in the word, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Next, worship, pray, and praise him through your trials. I know many of you, again, already do this. The world's not easy to live in right now, and there are times, you are days where it's rough. And that is when you just got to put on that worship music. And I don't care if you are afraid of it. Like, go listen to it, because worshiping him in... It's just, there's nothing like it. I mean, that is what I do when I am in a tough spot or I'm going into a tough spot. That is what I do. And I listen to it pretty often. Um, so don't take it lightly. Praise him, pray, worship. Um, address any, any habits that may be blocking you from the flow of the Holy Spirit. If food and weight are one of those, go pick up my book. I talk all about it. Next, work through any pain that's in your heart. This is again the thing I talk about in my book. Give what's in your heart that's hurting to the Lord, and but don't forget about it. Sit with him. Ask him to reveal to you what is in your heart that's hurting. Psalm 139, 23 through 24 says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I know when I pray that, it's on my heart. I know the Lord always reveals what's on my heart, but I got to go to him and be open to that. And the last one is be that example, be that broken vessel um, healed by God's grace who is willing to walk beside a younger woman who might be struggling with something you've struggled with before. That's what a godly, being a godly mentor is all about. You know, if you meet someone who's going through what you went through, that person is there for a reason. And maybe you're not supposed to stand there and share your story the whole time, but you are there to be an encourager, to listen to them and to share with them what you've learned and to share your wisdom and how God has pulled you through. You know, he's not looking for us to be perfect vessels. There's a reason we are broken vessels. Um, and I talked about that the other week. You know, he's he's using us and we have to let him use us when those people come into our lives and not kind of hide our story because we're ashamed of it. Um, we just really need to let him let let ourselves be those vessels for his grace. So um, that's it. I hope this has helped you um, in whatever way mentoring would help you um, or finding godly mentors would help you. I really recommend this book, the Spiritual Mothering Book. Um, I just looked at this quote. Something Spiritual mothering has more to do with demonstrating the shape of godliness than with teaching lesson plans. Spiritual mothering can happen in individual relationships and in groups. I've had so many women who God has placed in my life that have been spiritual mothers to me. I mean, not like a ton, but women that were specifically placed there for that reason. So um, here we go. 
This author's working definition for the spiritual mothering relationship is this. When a woman possessing faith and spiritual maturity enters into a nurturing relationship with a younger woman in order to encourage and equip her to live for God's glory. <laughs> Please note that giving birth biologically or being of a certain chronological age are not pre prerequisites for spiritual mothering. When women do for other women what Elizabeth did for Mary, I believe we will see young women burst forth in lives of praise to God. Great book. I need to do a study on it sometime, but um, just notice, you know, nurturing. Be that nurturer for some of these women who have broken journeys that need your healing and your hope. They need to be pointed to Jesus. So, all right, guys, I'll see you next week. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in today. If you love this podcast, make sure you leave a review on Spotify, share it with your friends, visit my website, or follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Get Real with Meredith. See you next time on Guiding God's Daughters.